Welcome to the Registrar's Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County, and this show is about Plymouth County real estate. Uh, this show is being taped in February, but I'll be reporting on the January recordings at the Registry of Deeds. Our headline for the month was Strong Start to 2017 for Plymouth County Real Estate. Um, I'm going to have a great guest on the show, Sharon McNamara from Boston Connect Real Estate. We'll be talking about the 2016 uh, record recordings we had at the registry and what's happening in 2017. So let's get right to the numbers. You're going to see a bar chart of sales of property, the deeds recorded at the registry of deeds. Uh, January and February are our slowest months in recordings at the registry based upon the weather, uh, but there were 685 deeds recorded in January, down from the 935 in December, but 8% more than last January. So with one month of data in, we're up 8% for the year. The next bar chart you're going to see is of mortgages. There were 1,674 mortgages recorded in January, less than the 2,233 in December, but up 19% over last January. So year to date, we're up 19%. The next bar chart you're going to see is of foreclosure deeds. We've certainly had a lot of trouble since the meltdown in 2008. It's being somewhat uh, moderated, but we did have 55 foreclosure deeds recorded in January. A foreclosure deed is when a lender has taken back the ownership from an individual. Uh, it was less than the 60 in December, but 6% more than last year. In the next bar chart you're going to see is a foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is a document that we would get at the registry that shows someone's in trouble. There were 66 of those in January, less than the 76 in December, but 58% less than last January when there were 158, I'm sorry, 154 foreclosure notices. The lenders are getting caught up with things that have been in their file for quite some time. You're going to see a listing of foreclosure deeds in notices by community. Uh, obviously, Brockton and Plymouth have been the highest in Plymouth County, though just about every community has been affected over these many years. Uh, if you're in trouble of finding yourself or a friend or a family member having difficulty, please reach out to a federal housing council as soon as possible to try to help yourself out. Our next uh, training room, uh, free training operation will be on Thursday, March 9th. Please take advantage of it. It's a great way to learn how to efficiently navigate our website, searching for documents. Our property fraud alert is available on our website. You can be noticed if anybody records anything um, against your property by an email. Um, our linked index project is now back to 1899. We'll be going all the way back to the founding of Plymouth County in 1685. And in November, we still have on those display, but we welcomed in November the town of Rochester to our historical display. We're doing Abington office hours in Abington Town Hall, Thursday, February 23rd. And my guest uh, on this show, once again, will be coming up shortly is Sharon McNamara of Boston Connect Real Estate. So we'll see you in the next segment. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. So welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name's John Buckley. I have two great guests uh, in this segment of the show. We always try to do something educational in nature in this show. We've had surveyors, commercial real estate brokers, 
appraisers, anyone involved in the real estate market that can share information with you. And, and I would like to introduce who's been on the show before in both cases, Cindy Ford. Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. And Sharon McNamara. Hi, John. Nice to see you again. Uh, both of Boston Connect Real Estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give our viewers a little background about how you got in the business and a little bit about Boston Connect Real Estate. Perfect. Uh, I've been doing this for 16 years, if I can even really believe that. Time flies um, when you're having fun. I actually opened up Boston Connect Real Estate, went out on my own in 2010, so it was a declined market. Uh, it was a little risky to do, but no place to go but up. And now we have three offices. So we have an office in Pembroke, we have an office in Bridgewater, and we have an office in Dorchester that we just opened. I'm not sure if you knew that. Um, which is great because we're connecting Boston to the South Shore up Route 3 and Boston to the South Shore up Route 24. Uh, probably we'll work on getting a Cape office, not anytime right now. <laughs> uh, but we have 48 agents in the three offices and things have been great. So where is your Dorchester office? We're right in Adams Village, right on Adams Street, oh, across sure. from the Airy Pub. Everybody oh, knows the Airy Pub. Of course. <laughs> yes, so we're right there. Uh, where the old Gerard's was, the first oh, floor. Oh, sure. That building was sold, and it's now called Landmark. Nice yeah. new restaurant, really cool vibe, and we're up on the third floor there. So great. it's a little annex, which is great. And there's a lot of great scones nearby. Oh, absolutely. Right. That's what everybody, yeah. yeah. The bakeries right, right there are right. fabulous. <laughs> and, and the Bridgewater uh, location is? Yeah, the Bridgewater location is right on Main Street. So it's right in that sort of little epicenter there, right near the college and everything, right? 63 Main Street, which is a perfect location, especially for some of our agents live in Middleborough, Lakeville. They're servicing all that area, Easton, Bridgewater. So it's nice that we have agents all over and they all have a satellite now. Great. And Cindy, how did you get involved with real estate? Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> I follow her everywhere. Um, well, we've been friends for uh, about 24 years. Oh, and it was she made it look so easy yeah. that um, almost 13 years ago I decided to follow her lead and follow in her footsteps and I've been following her ever since um, <laughs> we'll follow her to the end of the earth uh, so I started doing it full-time um, about a year and a half ago I did it with a full-time job um, during the last 12 years and that was um, not easy but uh, Sharon was a great support system, and I'm thrilled, thrilled beyond belief that she went out on her own. You it's know, been great. I bet it is great to be able to focus on this as a primary activity. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I did it full time mm -hmm. when I was I sure. worked part time because I put about 40 or 50 hours a week into it. And now that I look back, I don't know how I did it. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know how anyone could do it. It was a blur but I'm thrilled to be doing it absolutely full-time, 100% now, so it's great. So we're a little bit out of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, there are still uh, impacts on how, how good a year it was for most people. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about 2016 first? Yeah, 2016 was a great year. It, it seemed very, um, you know, it started off January and February. It seemed very steady. It was a lot busier than we're seeing this year. Um, as I was saying earlier, I know it's a little slow by the visitors we get in our office, um, it, but everyone we talk to right now says it is slow. But last year, it was, um, there were pockets of extremely, extremely busy, and then, but through the whole year, it was very consistent so that they, you put something on the market, it was selling right away. I think we still have the same problem this year, though, with no inventory. Sure. And that's something we talked about all the time in 2016, but uh, we did have a great year. So let's, let's talk a little bit about inventory. 16 certainly was affected by inventory, and mm -hmm. so will 17 be affected by inventory. Why do you think there are so few people making moves? Well, um, what we talk about, what we think happens is the people that are living in the four-bedroom colonials, they need to, as Sharon coined the phrase, right size. They maybe want to move to something a little bit smaller, but they are looking at properties that are far more than what they paid for their property and so to get something that much smaller for so much money sure. it doesn't make sense to them maybe mm -hmm. financially to da right size into something and then have it cost so much money so they're not moving that means that it's difficult for the first-time home buyer to buy their first home because 
The person that's in their first home can't buy that four-bedroom colonial because they're, the people aren't moving out of those properties. So it makes it, it's a, it's a cycle and it makes it very difficult uh, for us. So we're, we need people to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to right size. <laughs> yeah, so sale prices have gone up. There's no question over yes. the last couple of years things have gone up. Uh, and that creates um, both good news and bad news. All those people that were underwater mm -hmm. are now pr pretty much, you know, they say 85% of people are now out from underwater. Yeah. And, um, but I agree with you that that continues to boost, you know, mm -hmm. what you can do with your dollars. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and with your budget and what you pay monthly and rates are kind of bumping around a little bit. Have you mm -hmm. had any issues with the interest rates? We really haven't seen a direct impact because of the interest rates. The, truly, the, the one problem that we really have right now is, you know, all of the loan officers that we work with, and we work with some great loan officers, they, they're they doing pre-approvals for people. That part of the process is still happening, which gives us the indication that people do want to move. It's the fact that we can't find them a house because there isn't any inventory. Uh, when they trickle up a little bit, sometimes you get a little burst of, oh, maybe I should do it now in case it happens again. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel as it's going to hold many people back. It might, for the first time home buyer, we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. It might put them in a situation if it goes up again, that maybe they just have to buy a lesser value home. But in the inter and with the rates going, uh, not the rates, but the value of houses going up and the sale price going up, I feel that that is directly related to the low inventory too because people are now buying with emotion. I'm willing to pay $50,000 over asking price for this house to get this house. And we're seeing that on the South Shore in the city, it's fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 over asking. Wow. Mm -hmm. the, so, the struggle there, I'm sorry, to so the, the, the struggle there is trying to get some of those properties to appraise. Mm -hmm. you, you're not sure that they will appraise for that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, you, you know, a big thing when someone offers 50000 more, that person thinks that their property is really worth that. But then the appraiser comes in and says, mm, no, mm -hmm. maybe it's 30000 less. M it might be more that it appraises for, but I ran into that several times last year where properties were, because people overbid, they were buying with emotion, as Sharon said, they were not appraising out, and they were appraising under about 30000 less than asking price. Mm -hmm. so do, you find, do you find that a condition of sale for a lot of people subject to an appraisal worth X. Where, absolutely. That's one of the contingencies we see written in the majority of time. And that's, you know, one of the struggles we're actually having. I, I did a CMA, a comparative market analysis re recently for, you know, a lot of people have been doing the analysis. They feel that, oh, I hear that the market is so hot. It's, a, you know, it's, things are moving so fast. They have this false pretense, though, that that means the value of their house is that much more. Mm -hmm. So when we tell them what the real value of the house is, that's why they're a little hesitant to go forward. Um, but I do think that, I am sort of lost my train of thought there when I was talking about that, John. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> I was going to go uh, directly to how you can help homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's a pre-approval letter. Mm. So why don't you talk a little bit about that, Cindy? Well, well you would advise people that there are many people out there, I'm sure, that want to move up, move down, buy another house, or first-time home, home buyers. Seems to me that's an important aspect. For me, it's it's the biggest. Um, so it, whether I'm listing your property or you're a first-time home buyer, I always ask, are you pre-approved with a, a company, a, a, a mortgage company? If someone is pre-approved with maybe a larger bank or somewhere online, I strongly suggest that they reach out to a loan officer with a mortgage company to get pre-approved because the, the, the inventory, again, is so low that when you see something in your price range, most likely 50 to 100 other people are looking at that property <laughs> yeah. as well. And mm -hmm. you might get in a bidding war. Many people may put an offer in, so I want my client to be prepared. The other thing I don't want to happen is often those other companies, they, they're not actual loan officers, so they are pre-qualifying you with with you just saying I make X amount a year and I have zero debt and th they don't have your W-2s, they don't have bank statements, they don't know mm -hmm. exactly what you make each year and if you have you know things that you can write off so that makes it very difficult and then you take them out and you show them a property and they you find out very close to the closing when 
when it's time to get down to the wire that they may not qualify. They may be 100,000 under that. So for me, mm -hmm. I need to make sure that you have the best pre-qualification letter that I know that I'm taking you to look at properties that you actually can afford. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure it's a time factor. You want to, you want to, you know, match the right people up with the right offer and in the right range. And I want to make sure that they're the best qualified. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I want my offer to to stand out the strongest. And in generally speaking, we do, mm -hmm. with the exception of what I'm running into lately is people are actually buying properties with cash because they sold their property maybe in June yeah. or July. So now they have that physical money, whereas before, when you had the property, you know, you, your money, your funds aren't good until you sell your Sorry. property so that you can buy the next property. So I've lost out. My clients were the highest offer on several mm -hmm. properties and they lost out for cash buyers. They took less because it was cash. There was no contingencies whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that made my job very difficult for several of my clients last year. Anything you want to add to the pre-approval letter? Yeah, well, in jumping back to what you had originally okay. asked me too with the contingencies, and Cindy was talking about that, the, the appraisal contingency, that is definitely something we're seeing in all of our offers that, you know, the sale price is to, you know, be at or above, you know, the appraisal. So we're seeing that as all contingencies, but another thing we're seeing which we find to be very dangerous and a slippery slope is people are waiving their home inspection mm -hmm. as a contingency in order to get these offers and this is what I mean when I say people are you know they're purchasing with that emotion just like we saw in 2004 and 2005 you know the market sure. was like this sure. it's very similar right now yeah. um, other than the part about the appraisal is very strict mm -hmm. now so it makes me uncomfortable we just try to slow our clients down and Really, what we do is we educate right. them on the best property to purchase. So I've heard uh, changes in technology, people's approach to purchasing mm -hmm. has changed over the last 10 years. Yes. Well, technology has taken a huge role. Um, and it's changed. I mean, that's the reason why our sale price to list price ratio is probably 99 percent, 98 percent. Um, I did one in Hanover recently that was 97.6 percent sale price to list price ratio because buyers now can stand in front of a house and take a screenshot and they know what the value of all the houses around them are, how much they've sold for. We didn't have that information back in 92 no. when we bought our homes. No. We just didn't have that at our fingertips. You almost had to just rely on you know the information you were getting from a real estate agent but now the information is so public and people can easily get it. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. Yeah. They're very well educated. Yeah. They're, 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 they're coming, probably, my clients are coming mm. to me very well educated and I'm, I'm fine with yeah. that. I, yeah. You mm -hmm. know I don't mind that at all. We're, keeping up with it <laughs> can be a challenge. That is the challenge. And, and you are very techni technological <laughs> savvy <laughs> But she has so many things that I, I personally can't keep up sometimes. I think I don't think I can learn one more mm. thing. I, don't I feel like we're here in the, the, just the right age. I mean, I still know how to use a telephone when I'm talking to my boomers, right? <laughs> the old fashioned telephone. We actually have a mimic one of a rotary phone no, in our not. conference room. So we can use, I can still talk on the phone, no problem. But I also have a 21 and a 22 year old. So I'm very sure. in tuned with, you know, texting and tweeting and Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat and Facebook and all of these other, you know, things that we have at our fingertips now. And that's really important. Social media has taken a huge role on all of that. And we have a, a huge Facebook presence, a big internet um, presence with the company. In fact, I'll go to New York generally every other year. There's a conference called Inman and um, Mary and I went, my assistant Mary went last year. The technology is probably, we'll see things in four years that they're talking about today. So it's really important to go there. I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. So let's, we talked about uh, how somebody would be prepared as a buyer. Uh, why don't you give potential sellers some advice, Cindy? how to prepare the home to get the most value. Well, one of the things that um, I, we do um, something called a pre-CMA. So I need to go over to the property and view your property before I can do an actual CMA because you could have updates that others don't and I'm comparing, you know, trying to compare apples to apples, although no house is, is the same. Once we determine if we're going to list your house, 
I go through as if I'm a buyer's agent or a buyer. So we want it to be a peer, whether it's 800 square feet or 8,000 square feet, we want it to fear, uh, appear that it's very large, that has plenty of space, that it's clean, that mm -hmm. you know there's no paint chipping, that things are freshened up. I don't necessarily want anyone to have to spend any money, but it's sometime it's removal of rugs, taking some additional furniture out, or when you know that they're going to be moving, start now with you know clearing out closets, because people are going to open your closets, mm -hmm. they're going to open up your cabinets. They are, they want to see if you have space. If you have things on top of the refrigerator or on the countertops, they can't they, they're just looking at all of your stuff. You don't want, you know, family photos and things. You want people to be looking at the property and envisioning themselves living there. Mm -hmm. So going through literally room by room and making suggestions and potentially mm -hmm. moving furniture or removing things, putting things in storage, putting things in totes, makes all the difference in the world. And my clients see that when I take them to see properties and they, mm -hmm. they're looking at the stuff <laughs> and, and I'm trying to get them to focus on the house and they're like, this isn't clean, this isn't this, this, this has st things everywhere and I say, see the importance, mm -hmm. your house went under agreement in four days. So it, it makes a difference of you know, how the outside of the property, even at this time of year, you know, you need to keep up with you know any of the twigs, the branches, things that have fallen down. Make make sure that you know your walkways are cleared. Um, but going through that property room by room is so important. Mm -hmm. With my um, as a listing, Sharon, would you agree or add yeah. to that? Yeah. So um, you know, Cindy and I actually do the radio show together. So Cindy's like my co-host, and we talk about this you all the time. Want to give a plug for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we do uh, talk real estate on WATD and we do it every Wednesday night. We used to be Saturday mornings, but we switched over to Wednesday yes. nights, which has been great. Mm -hmm. So it's Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara and Cindy Ford. Uh, both Cindy and I are also um, certified staging professionals. So we have that. Before you get off your radio station, yeah. I will say I've been a guest. Yes, you yes. have. And, and many times <laughs> we don't even get off a historical records. It's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I promised you the last time too we'd talk about that last, but I tend to but that's the part I love yeah, about yeah. your job. <laughs> um, it's so much fun to yeah. do that stuff. And we have to have you on, you promised sure. too, that we'll yeah, have sure. you back on again. Sure. Um, but I think that, you know, giving value to our clients and going around and just do giving them some staging tips is really important to help them through the process. Now, Cindy mentioned taking up rugs and moving furniture. For me, it's because I'm selling hardwood floors. Take down the heavy drapes, I'm selling windows. So, little tips like that. So, Cindy mentioned this time of year. Can you talk a little bit about your job, how it changes with the weather a little bit? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're in a season. Mm -hmm. We went had a great January, and all of a sudden we're getting snow. Yeah. So this time of year, I feel it's a little more difficult for buyers uh, just because you can't see the foundation. In some instances, you can't see the roof. So with all those things, you have to consider as a buyer's agent. But if you're thinking about selling your home, to me, this is the best time of year to do it. Um, if you have beautiful gardens, we can take pictures of those and we can get those on the internet and we can show them. But there is such a lack of inventory. There's a group of buyers out there that want a home. If you are on now, you're one of less inventory. You're de definitely probably going to get your price or above. But if you wait until the spring, which people think is April, it's really not. It's March. April, May is, is later. Now you have more houses for those buyers to choose from. So you're better off, I say, doing it now. And for the first time for me in forever that, I, that I've been doing this with Sharon, um, what I noticed, it's an open, I had two open houses of new listings last week. And it was terrible weather on, on Sunday, but people came out to them. And not one of those people had listed their property yet because they're afraid that they won't find a property. I've never had that Some issue. People list your house, we find you a house, we close <laughs> it the same day, we're done. It works. We've had people this past mm -hmm. year that did not have a place to go, that had to move in with family, that couldn't find a property. And I didn't want them to settle, and they didn't want to settle for just something. But that's what all of these people that came to my open houses, every one of them said, my agent said, you just have to put the property on the market. And I said, they're right. That's what I said to my clients. Because you can't wait till you find something. That will be gone before your property is listed. Mm -hmm. So why don't you give your contact information to the public? Sure. Uh, again, it's Sharon McNamara, the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. My phone number is 781 
294-4848. And you can find all of my information and all of Cindy's information in the company at bostonconnect.com. Cindy? My phone number is 781-367-4419. And again, you can call Boston Connect or email me at cford at bostonconnect.com. Well, great. Well, thanks for coming on. So, such a pleasure. Nice thanks for having you. us. Thanks, John. Nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. Well, thank you to Sharon McNamara. She did a great job, as always, in uh, pre presenting what's going, happening in the real estate market relative to the uh, realtors that are out there. Uh, in this segment of the show, we try to do something a little lighter in nature. Uh, we talk about some of the holidays of the month. You can see all the red shining all around me. Uh, PAC TV has decided to promote Valentine's Day, uh, the, the beautiful color red. Uh, we also um, celebrate uh, today, actually, the taping of uh, this show is on Lithuanian Independence Day. I have my Lithuanian pin from many Lithuanian celebrations over the year. Lithuania is a very unique country in that they had two separate independence days. The first independence celebrated after World War I, and then later in 1990, after the fall of the Soviet Union, they became independent again uh, in, uh, in a, remain today as an independent country. Uh, the 20th of February is President's Day. Um, I should have mentioned earlier February 12th was Lincoln's birthday. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. And the 28th is Mardi Gras, uh, beginning of uh, Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. A couple of our notable records relative to the month. You'll see an image of Samuel Lincoln. Samuel Lincoln um, was a, a predecessor of Abraham Lincoln, his great, great, great grandfather. He immigrated from Hingham, England to Ingham, Massachusetts uh, in 1637. And he was known for helping uh, building the old ship church in Hingham. Uh, there's a great statue of Abraham Lincoln in Hingham Center. And uh, I have to give credit to the Suffolk Registry of Deeds because they brought the deed forward. Back in that era, uh, Hingham was part of Suffolk County. The next image you're going to see is a president relative to President's Day. Grover Cleveland owned land in Manomet. He hunted and fished down here and would stay at the Idlewild, Idlewild Hotel down in Manomet. Later bought and built a home over in Buzzes Bay. And last but not least, in recognition of Lithuanian Independence Day, Admiral Fred Bakutis, Grover and Brockton, went to Brockton High, graduated from the Naval Academy, was a distinguished fighter pilot in World War II, and became commander of the Naval Forces at both ends of the Earth, the North and South Poles. And when he uh, was in that job, he named a newly discovered territory into Antarctica, uh, into Brockton, Antarctica. And uh, you can still Google that and see that story today. I want to thank uh, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards from my office, as well as David Antoine, who kind of did multiple tasks today from PAC TV and helping me get this show together. Together, they allow us to share information, which for people is very important, as people's home is, for most people, their primary asset. So I hope you have a great month. I'll see you next month and um, have a healthy time.